Yeah, we're seeing slow responses here too. Um, it looks like maybe we're approaching our SLO percentiles. I'm just getting to my desk to check. Uh, let me get back to you. Walking, all right, yeah, we're seeing slow responses, huh? Let me see, uh, what is going on here? Uh, seems the web app pod is pegged to its CPU limit. Hmm. Because this is a critical workload, I know we allocated 150% extra CPU capacity for this pod. Hmm. But it looks like it's hitting its limit. Let me uh, increase it temporarily while we see what's going on. Hmm. Okay, I'll bump the deployment to the latest image. That should help as it's even more efficient now. Coming up online, let's, all right, let's monitor the workloads. Let's see here. Okay. What? No, it just swallowed all the extra CPU I just gave it. Oh, crap. Okay, it, it seems like it's exfiltrating data. Oh, no. I think it's mining crypto. But why? Where? This cluster is really hardened down. What's going on? Oh, my God. No need to worry. We are here to help. Oh, my gosh. El Seguro, is that you? That's me, Stacey Potter, still not deported. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what seems to be the problem? So my app deployment seems to have been pawned. Apparently someone is breaking into my container. It starts crypto mining shortly after my deployment is ready. Hmm, let me see what I can do. All right. Um... Well, so I don't understand because my network policies restrict all incoming access, all credentials are handled in, secret, in a secrets manager, pods run unprivileged, and RBAC is quite restrictive. Um, all internal traffic uses MTLS. How are they getting in? Hmm. All right, let me check that container image. All right, um, okay. Let me crack open the container image and see what's in it. <laughs> All right, I see. Uh, so, it seems that your image has a malicious payload. Let me check how you're building your image. Well, here's the pipelines. You can see this app is building the image. Okay. All right, I see the problem. Apparently, the compiler image you're using to build your project is compromised. Someone pushed a hacked version into the registry modified to inject the crypto miner in your app. So, it's my code's fault? Oh, no, no, your code is totally secure. Um, by the way, your Kubernetes security jobs are amazing. The malware is flowing through your software supply chain. It means that your dependencies are compromised, but nothing is actually checking them. But I have a vulnerability scanner, and it shows zero CVEs. Oh, yeah, so in this case, the scanner will not help. Um, your image has zero vulnerable components, so there is nothing to report. It's effectively zero CVE malware. Um, let's see what we can do. All right, um, let's protect the builder image by creating a salsa attestation. We also guard the source registry, uh, the source integrity with the salsa source tools. All right, next let's harden the build by verifying the provenance of the builder image and the commit we're building at with an ample policy. And we'll check both attestations. Uh, now let's add some signing to your images with SIGSTOR. And we also build the provenance attestation for your build image. Now let me enforce another policy to verify your attestations before pushing this shiny new app image. Makes sense, we don't want to push things that don't smell right. Right. Finally, let's attach a signed policy results in a VSA to your image. A VSA? Right, a verification summary attestation. It's a type of statement that we can use to let our cluster know that we've done our homework and had ample verifier builder and source. That way, we can block the deployment if things are out of place. But we are guarding your app much, much earlier. Uh, ah, okay. So check this out. Let's try uh, building um, the app uh, with a compromised image. 
Oh, awesome. It's now blocking the build process from using the compromised image. Precisely. The build process refused to run because the compiler image failed the salsa policy. Now let's block an, any malicious images from reaching the cluster. Uh, we'll write a caverna policy to evaluate the ample results we're touching with cosine, and then we'll try to run the compromised image. Let me apply the policy real quick. There it goes. Now let's try running it. Ah, awesome. The malicious image is now rejected from the cluster. Exactly. Now let's run the image with the spice up salsa image. Nice, it's in. Thanks so much for stepping in, but who is behind all of these wonderful security tools? Well, um, so I'm part of a secret cabal of, of heroes called open source maintainers. Whoa, wow. For years we have been working <laughs> in the shadows, developing security technologies to protect against uh, the threats attacking open source. Uh, not only open source, but all software in the world. We monitor evolving threads and develop technologies like SBOM, Sixtor, and Salsa, and more. They form the arsenal to defend against the, for the evil forces out there. Whenever there is a new threat, we jump into action uh, to protect and defend. Our project protects all stages of software development lifecycle against the scariest threats. And then we are always to get working together uh, to secure the software supply chain. <laughs> But all of this seems so hard. No wonder we need superheroes. Oh. Well, actually. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> no. uh, oh, what? We're actually, we're, we are just developers just like you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference between us and you is that we're focused on, on solving security problems, while you, as you should, um, are focused on your daily work. Well, I do, but I also need to run secure development cycle. Unfortunately, this is so overwhelming. There's a lot to do, and I sometimes don't know where to start. Yeah, we understand that. As regular developers, we also are also uh, burdened by the load of uh, securing our own projects. That's why we not only try to make our tools easier to use, but we also now have Baseline. Baseline? Right, the open source project security baseline, a framework that establishes concrete actions to secure your project. It's a perfect map that tells you where and when to deploy these technologies and best practices to keep your code safe and minimize risk. Ah, so it's all of you security projects, working together as a team like the Avengers. Exactly, uh, but instead of muscle characters, it's all computer nerds working on projects like you. <laughs> so, um, for example, let me, let me show you. So this was your project before we, when I got here. Okay. And this is what it, looked like, uh, what it looks like after we applied a couple of basic salsa principles. Oh, this looks much easier to handle now, but I don't understand. We only made like three or four changes. That's right, security projects protect you in many areas tracked by baseline. That's why just by putting in, you know, a little style of spice uh, across so many of the baseline controls. That's pretty cool. I mean, that means that as I build actual security, compliance just comes naturally. It's perfectly said. Well, it sounds like you're ready to join our secret cabal of security heroes. I'd love to. Where can I find out more? Well, start <laughs> by visiting baseline.opensf.org to get started. The, so, secret is, the, the secret is not having superpowers, it's just having a map. So security isn't about doing everything all at once. Exactly. It's about taking incremental steps in the right direction. Each control you implement makes you stronger. Each attestation you verify closes another door to attackers. I guess that makes us all potential security heroes. Now you're getting in. <laughs> um, so it doesn't stop there. Um, the baseline deals with other risk categories. The framework defines eight control families that ensure projects are sustainable, well-documented, and have sound governance practices. Other areas of cybersecurity, like vulnerability management and security assessments, are also covered. But why would you include things like licensing or governance in a security uh, baseline? Um, well, open source projects become part of products and projects everywhere. So, uh, so a well-defined governance process uh, ensures that uh, changes and new features that are implemented into the projects are well reviewed uh, and discussed in the community before flowing down to downstream consumers like you. 
and also ensuring that projects have a no personal license, uh, license uh, ensure that whenever uh, a project uh, has new security features, you can keep using and updating in the future. Okay, and the baseline has levels? Uh, that's right, so baseline has three levels. Think of them like stairs. Uh, start where you are and then climb when you're ready. Uh, and what's the difference? Um, so level one is the foundation of baseline. Uh, it, it establishes principles like protecting your main branch, using MFA, actually things like you probably are already doing. Um, so it's for any project, any size. Uh, uh, level two is for projects with regular users. Now, at this stage, you're signing releases, uh, running automated tests, and handling vulnerability reports like a pro. So do I like pick my level based on how good I am at security? No, no, no. You pick based on the maturity and usage level of your project. Uh, so if you're a single maintainer project, you can start at level one. Uh, and if you're a library with thousands of dependents, you, maybe it's time for level three. Okay, so the levels grow with my project. Exactly, and those security tools that we use, they check for requirements across all three levels. Uh, so you're building real security and not just ticking boxes. All right, I'm ready to start climbing. Great, and don't forget that we are all part of the OpenSF, a community of developers, security folks, and organizations working together to secure open source. But I'm not a security expert. Ah, well, uh, no worries. So many of us were in theater when we started on this journey. Uh, so you, that's why the OpenSF has working groups. Uh, pick what, you, what interests you. So want to learn best practices? Join best practices. If you care about AI security, there's a group for that. Um, and want to help build Baseline and Ample and other tools like that, check out Orbit. Or so, help identify secure the most critical projects everyone depends on. Ah, okay. So I can contribute uh, at any level. Exactly. Uh, so show up to a meeting, join the Slack, submit an issue, um, review a document. Every contribution counts. We're all volunteers making the open source safer together. No cape required? Uh, no cape required, but you may need this. <gasps> Yeah! <laughs> Welcome to the Cabal, Stacey. Woo! <laughs> and before we leave, I just want to do a couple of quick mentions. So uh, Merge Forward is a new initiative creating uh, diverse, supportive communities and ally networks for shared learning, mentorship, friendship, and collaborative idea exchange. You can find Merge Forward and all the community groups on the CNCF community page, as well as Slack. Uh, we're also hosting an LGBTQIA community gathering in the community hub today from 3.30 to 4.30. Um, where would any of us be without acknowledging the hard work of others? Uh, and we want to extend a huge thank you to Whitney and Lewis, whose security showdown talk at KubeCon a few years ago inspired us to make this comedic skit today. So thank you, thank you, Whitney and Lewis. I'm Stacy with the Open SSF. And I'm Puerco uh, with Caribbean Systems. And we'll both be at the OpenSSF booth number 1642 near the Project Pavilion. If you want to chat with us, you can find us there. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs>